Welcome to the Connor's Corner segment of Ask the Lawyer. You know, a few weeks ago, my wife and I were home. We were watching TV, and there was a you know one of the great musicals of all time, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. And there was one dancer that was particularly impressive, and her name was Julie Newmeyer. And whatever happened to her? Well, she's on the show right now. What happened to Julie Newmeyer? <laughs> well, good morning, Mike. You must have good eyes, because being the tallest girl of all the seven... I was in the back, hid, practically hidden. <laughs> That's my story. But Seven Brides, oh, what a lovely film. I'm so pleased and happy to have that as part of my life and biography, whatever these things are. Now, how did you get the part in that film? Because I was a good dancer. I was <laughs> the best dancer of all the dancers. That was a film, it's unusual, because the MGM was kind of going into its uh, down period between the the bright and beautiful um, Technicolor mu uh, musicals, and it was going into a dark period, and they didn't really want to fund this film because it had dancers, hello, men as dancers. That was might not come across to the American public, but... This is one of the, when I look at this film today, and I look at those men, the dancers, and Howard Keel, uh, I, it's one of the lustiest films I've ever seen. So there's a, they pack a lot of power in, uh, as, well, choreography. <laughs> well, I think all kids should see it. But, uh, it's, it. It's such a beautiful film, it looks best on the big screen. I have an 85-inch screen right here in front of me in my bedroom. And, well, the bigger the screen, the better it looks. What's up, Mike? Tell me. <laughs> well, I don't know, but what happened to you after after Seven Brides for Seven Brothers? Are you kidding? No. I grew up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> on television. I really started off on the stage. Um, yes, in New York and... Well, I was lucky enough to get a Tony Award for a very popular comedy called Marriage Ground with two of the biggest star Hollywood stars, Charles Boyer and Claudette Colbert. It, it, it's interesting because this was, a, well, I was a, in the play a Swedish girl who comes to America and, and wants the professor, played by Charles Boyer, to father her child. Well, he's happily married, and anyways, it made a good comedy for two hours in the evening, and um, uh, that's the story about the stage. Now, you did a film version of that, but the different actors, different lead actors with you. Yes, yes. Um, James Mason, Susan Hayward. Uh, Mason was remarkable to work with. A very... Very giving, very helpful, very, I think the bigger and better the artist or you are, the more generous has been my experience. I experienced that also with Lucille Ball when I was doing a television series called uh, The Living Doll on her studio. Lu uh, Dizzy Lou. Dizzy Lou. Lou. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Very generous people. Now, of course, a lot of people today, they mm -hmm. probably remember you as, as the Catwoman. Why not? Well, why, why not is, is true, but how, how did you get that role, and, and what was it like being on Batman? Well, you know, there's always one role that you do in your life of 170 performances, this, this that, and the other, that people remember. Now, maybe they remember the, 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 the costume or something, because it looks like black licorice poured over me, but uh, <clears throat> all in all, it was, a, well, it was the most popular television series of its time. It, actually, I won't tell you the date, it seems 68, 66, 68, but since there have been so many copies, so many renditions of Batman on film, and, and I don't know, this, forever, it'll go on forever and ever. It's a wonderful character, Catwoman. It's just a wonderful character to play. 
and they're doing it again now. As a TV show? No, as a film. Oh, yeah, it was a film, yeah. And Yeah, yeah, and Catwoman is in it, right. And I don't know who's playing a Catwoman in this film. I heard an English actress, but still not sure about it. If you know, let me know. Okay, we'll try to find that out. Mm-hmm. What are you doing today? I understand you have a blog. A blog? Yeah, well, it's Facebook. Am I? Yeah, it's Facebook is quite fun because then there, if the audience is worldwide, it's huge. You, you get new friends. You have new business associates. And you, your life just, just enlarges enormously. So... I love the internet. That's my place to perform. That's that you can say a lot of things. If if you talk politics, boy, people throw it back at you. So you kind of stay away from that. You know, as a someone in the theater, it's not in films. People, I don't know. <laughs> stay away from that. <laughs> okay. Now, what's this? Chris is telling me the birthday portrait. You had a birthday about what? last month, so belated happy yeah. birthday. Uh, yeah, I'm 86, which is pretty terrific. And um, the idea for the portrait, it's me its me on a surfboard. Um, actually, it's out in the back garden. And um, I'm, I'm wearing, well, you have to look at it to see it. It's, it's kind, of, kind of fun, um, spectacular maybe. Mm-hmm. And it just, it's, it's a sweet portrait. You gotta see it. It's. Um, can you describe it? Have you seen it? Yes. I don't know how to what's describe it, look- it, but I guess uh, well, it, it's wonderful. It like? Yes. What, what's it look like to you? <laughs> it's very interesting. And, and you're 86 years old. Yeah. I think you could lie about your age. Oh, but it's more fun to not to. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you get more points at this time in life. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not exactly a Vargas girl, but then on the other hand, maybe maybe I am. But it really, it's kind of about um, taking care of yourself, being healthy, and, oh, more importantly, thinking healthy. So, um, ah, the portrait was inspired by another portrait of one of our greatest actresses in, in Gone with the Wind, Olivia de Havilland. She lives in Paris now, and she's, you won't believe this, she's 103. And the loveliest picture of her came out with her white hair kind of piled up and a sweet smile and this lovely dress. And I thought, oh, my goodness, that is so inspiring. I think I'll do something. Let me ask you mm-hmm. one question. People looking at your films, if, if you said, I want somebody mm-hmm. to look at this film to see what talent Julie Newmar has, what film would that be? Golly, you know, I, the other night I was looking at a dance that I did where my body was all painted all in gold. I mean, from top to bottom. You, like Goldfinger, remember? Yes. And it, and it was in a very early film, um, not McKenna's Gold, uh, but Serpent of the Nile. But... If you just see the dance, it's really, really, it's outstanding. For me to say that about myself is, uh, of course, it's very pleasing, but I was just 18, 19 years old, and I choreographed this dance supposedly 2,000 years ago in Egypt. What can you say? So I go, But in order to do that, I went downtown to the library and looked at all the books, now you couldn't this with a push of a button that sitting at your at your computer. You had to really go and do a lot of deep research. Anyway, it's a long answer to a short question, and it's called Serpent of the Nile. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you one question. You brought up McKenna's Gold, and I mean mm-hmm. that had probably one of the greatest casts of of any western. How did you get involved in that picture? And what was it like filming it? Well, that was, I remember one night meeting Robert Kennedy. He was, and this is maybe two months before he died, he was touring the country, running for president, and it was 
kind of exciting for us. I sat next to him at dinner, and, and Gregory Peck sat on the other side of me, and Robert Kennedy's wife, Ethel, sat opposite me. And, and Robert was very tired from, from going around talking to so many people. You can imagine. <clears throat> and Ethel said to Gregory, she handed him a book, and, and she said, Here, read this poetry. And he kind of pushed himself back in his chair and gave her a kind of a cool look and said, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's too inside a story. But McKenna's goal was a, a, um, a Western that was made on location in Utah and Arizona. Fabulous experience for all of us actors. And probably the thing that stands out is there were more actors that had won Academy Awards uh, playing parts in that film. Um, and I remember it was directed by an Englishman. Jay now, Lee Thompson? Thing. Yeah, you've done your homework. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. And I played in India. Well, I'm blonde. I was blonde at the time, but I had brown eyes. So, you know, a wig would change that. And um, that would not happen these days. Mm-hmm. If you, but I played an Apache Indian uh-huh. with a big scar on her face <laughs> who wanted to kill the leading lady. And, uh, well, interesting film. Yeah, you, you could say that. Yeah, it was different. For a Western, it was different. Yes, it was. Yes. So what are you doing today? What am I doing today? I'm writing. I'm... Uh, working on, actually, I'm working on my biography. I was, I, I thought about it for about 10 years and got off to kind of false starts. And I don't consider myself a writer. I write, but I'm not really a writer. And I finally found someone, a, a woman who wrote a very interesting biography called The First King of Hollywood. It's, it's the biography of Douglas Fairbanks. And her name is Tracy Gessel. And she's so much fun to work with and to sit with and to go over stories like you're asking me. You know, that happened to me when I met Earl Flynn in Cuba before the revolution and, and when we went off to see Superman. And Superman turned out to be, maybe I can't say this on air, <clears throat> Well, um, Superman was a famous performer of sexual dexterity. How's that? You like that? <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Anyway, stories like that, it's, it's lots of fun, and I'm having a wonderful time in my life now. Any idea when you think you'll be finished with your biography memoir? Oh, um, when it gets finished. I don't know how long it'll take. I'm having too much fun. My gosh. Just remembering these stories and... And there's something about being older. You, you, there's less strings attached to you. There's more truth you can share with people. There's more honesty from a deeper place that makes it okay to embarrass yourself or tell stories, although it's not a tell-all. It is. A, it tells all, but... Hmm, gee, well, in, in that sense, only about dead people. And I hope you're not <laughs> following me on that statement, but yeah, you are. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, we look, forward, we look forward to the book, and promise when the book comes out, you'll be back on the show. Oh, you're so kind to me. Thank you. Thank you. Julie Newmar, thank you for being on Connor's Corner. What a pleasure. Thank you. For, thank you, Mike. Thank you. <laughs>